Okay, we'll start off by grabbing your original footage. Got them right here in the downloads folder. So we'll import both of these files and then we'll select and we'll create a new composition from the selection. We're going to create two comps. Oh, that's good. Now we're going to add these comps to the render queue and uh, set the file paths. Then the, uh, the output is just going to be lossless. We're going to add a post render action which is to import the files. Uh, the reason we want to uh, generate these lossless files is because Mocha is not going to like the MP4s at all, not even a little bit, and uh, we want the best quality that we can to work from uh, always when we're doing compositing. So now we open up the, uh, the 4TB comp and we'll replace the original MP4 with our uncompressed uh, rendered file. Now we're going to pick an endpoint and then duplicate and then pre-compose. Okay, now there, uh, you'll understand the reason for the pre-comp in just a minute. Now I'm going to open up this pre-comp and we're going to trim or uh, set a new out point so that we don't have to process any more footage than we have to. All right, next step, I want to track this in Mocha. Okay, we'll just take all the defaults here and let the uh, frames cache and then we're going to uh, set up our our tracking. So we're going to browse uh, through the file just here a little bit, find a good spot but we've got a lot of information to track. Okay, This looks pretty good here. I'll zoom in and uh, uh, move it around so uh, Pick a good starting point where we've got a lot of detail to track and start drawing our splines. You know, we just Mocha tracks planes, so we want to uh, establish everything in a plane. So we're just going to adjust this, and this looks pretty good. And we need to adjust our tracking. These are the parameters that we want to set, and uh, we're going to oh, use like 80% of the pixels and smooth out the track just a little bit and then go ahead and start by tracking in reverse. So uh, sit back and relax while the track happens and uh, watch what happens and if it looks good then it probably is good. Now as the track uh, gets close to the end we just give it a moment and then we uh, jump to the first keyframe and we're going to zoom in a little bit so that we can watch more carefully and follow the track in the end and we're going to track now to the end of the shot. Just watch how the mask works. Looks like everything is working just fine. Okay and good. Good we're done. So tracking is all down. Now the next thing we're going to have to adjust the surface. We want to line the surface up with the TV screen. So uh, just move in, carefully adjust the points, and uh, zoom in a little bit. You just get this as close as you can to the TV, and then the easiest thing to do is, is add one of the, the images. Here we'll just add this grid and quickly double check. Let's uh, fit the whole thing to the screen and quickly double check our track. Okay, so it looks like our track is really good. Okay, everything is fine. Okay, it follows it right off screen. Everything's hunky-dory. The next step is actually pretty easy. We want to expand this a little bit because I want to see, I want to have a little room to work on my project. So we're going to expand this surface so that it is just slightly larger than the TV. And then we're going to export our corner pin tracking data. Okay, Just the standard corner pin tracking data. Okay, Pick that and copy it to the clipboard. That's all there is to it. Now let's go back to After Effects. And first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a little animation preset that I've made 
I'll explain uh, how to create this. It's actually really easy. It's just two effects. So let's apply the preset. And what we've got is corner pin and CC power pin. Okay. The corners are all tied together with uh, an expression, very simply, and expand is turned on. All right. Now the next thing is we move to the very first frame and paste the corner pin data. Then turn off corner pin and what we end up with is a nice stabilized shot of our TV. It's a little distorted, it's zoomed in, but that's okay. This is a stabilized shot of our TV that we can use to composite our Florida TV movie in. Okay, so the first thing I notice is the shot is not long enough, so uh, we're going to need to add time remapping. So we'll go up here from the animation menu and select, uh, or from the layer menu actually, and select uh, time, enable time remapping. We just drag the keyframe out to the end so our shot's long enough. Extend the out point. Okay, that's basically all there is to it. Double check, everything looks good. Okay, movie lasts long enough. Now, we're just going to size it up, make it fit. It looks like it's stuck pretty well to the screen, which is what we want. Okay, so I'm going to set the blend mode to screen so I can see through it a little bit. Um, I can see the actual frame of the television where we need to adjust things. Maybe turn the opacity down a little bit and then just use the pen tool uh, and get it all sized up. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll just use the pen tool now to draw a mask. Okay, not much to it. All right, position is good. Draw the mask few points, make some adjustments. Okay. Doesn't take very long. Apologize for my poor masking skills. I'm doing it on a trackpad on a laptop instead of with a mouse and it's a little awkward sometimes, but there we go. All right, so but our mask, uh, we want to feather the edge of the mask just a little tiny bit. Okay. Get down, we'll turn our uh, capacity back up. <clears throat> okay, one of the things that I noticed here is that the shot is actually quite blurry, a little out of focus. So we're going to add some fast blur so we can kind of match the look. Okay, we'll just uh, set a couple of keyframes, make some adjustments. Looks pretty soft down here. I'll add a little blur, blur, move down here. It looks really soft. We'll add just a little more blur. Important thing is we want it to make it, it look as much as we can like the original shot. All right. So back in the main comp, we're just going to paste our corner pin data. Boink! That's all it takes. And it's all lined up. Everything looks really good. All we have to do now is adjust the look and feel just a little bit. Let's get rid of the background in the pre-comp. So we just are dealing with the television. Okay, looks good. And back in the main comp, let's uh, you know take a quick look, and we'll uh, we'll make it look like it's more a part of the shot. By uh, first of all, I'm going to set it to uh, the screen. Blend mode against the back dark ground, and then maybe adjust the opacity down just a little bit to make it look like it's really part of the shot. Okay, double check. Everything looks good. Even the uh, even the rain is overlaying on the top of the shot because of the blend mode. Uh, final little check or two. Maybe try the add blend mode. Yeah, I don't know. It might be okay, but that's basically it. You just tweak it until it looks like you want it to look, and you are basically done. So there you are. In about 10 minutes, you got your shot all composited in, 
run a little RAM preview. It looks pretty darn good to me. Looks pretty darn good to me.